This episode was recorded during the UK's annual LCV event. Now, it's not open to the public, but we're allowed in, and it showcases the latest in low-carbon vehicle technology. LCV, low-carbon vehicle. Welcome to Fully Charged. This is a heavy goods vehicle-focused episode. We're, we're driving in a big convoy at this place called Millbrook, which is a vehicle proving ground, ground in, in, uh, in Bedfordshire in the United Kingdom. This is the first time Johnny's ever driven a dustbin an RCV. Lorry. Yes. Uh, or a dustbin lorry. We call them dustbin lorries. You can, might call it a trash truck, depending where you live. Yeah. Uh, but it's a refuse collection vehicle. But this one is a bit different. Now, as you can tell, clearly it's got a uh, combustion engine in it. But this one is a bit different. It's been, it's been converted. It does. It does use diesel. But this one is diesel and hydrogen, so this one has hydrogen tanks. And we're joined here by Sean today, who will explain how this is working. So at the moment, Sean, because the engine's warmed up, you were saying that it, it is using a fair amount of hydrogen at the moment. Yeah, the, 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 the truck is using a combination of diesel and hydrogen. Right. Um, it depends on the load on the engine and the engine speed. So basically, if, you, if your foot's off the pedals, no hydrogen be used or, or no diesel. When your foot's fully on the pedal, it's just diesel, but anywhere in between, It'll be a combination of diesel right. and hydrogen. But the actual, the, the, the diesel engine itself is, you haven't like had to massively convert the it or the, do it. The diesel engine is unmodified. Right. So the, the, mapping is, the mapping is done completely independently of the diesel engine. Right. We're in a Mercedes, aren't we? It's a, it's a Mercedes truck, yeah. I, I have to say, this is a childhood kind of ambition thing. I am going onto a high speed bowl. This is great, isn't it? That I've driven around here at about 180 yeah, in a normal yes, car. And I'm now sense. entering it at uh, 35. Because don't forget, the vehicle that we're in is used to being in a city really stop Really slow, starts. loads yeah. of stop starts. Yeah. I do Robert's wheelie bin, then I move 10 metres, then yeah. I do Sean's wheelie bin, then I move 10 <laughs> metres, then I do my wheelie bin, then I move 10 metres. You know the score. Yeah, yeah we're getting some now, so you see. Oh, that's here, yeah, that's the. That's so, it's, so it's kicked in there, you've just right. taken your foot off, then it's gone away. All yeah. oh, right, so um, you need to give it some. Yeah. So we've got the big, I noticed before we climbed in and, and operated that lovely door, yeah. we've got uh, two hydrogen cylinders. Uh, what kind of pressure are we talking about? It's 350 bar. 350 bar. Oh, that's Ooh. so that's, much. That's 350 times atmospheric pressure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, a that's quite a lot. I've got a suspension seat, which I really like. And I've noticed that we've got red seat belts, which reminds me of an MG Metro Turbo, uh, which I haven't seen for years. So what is the overall fuel saving and CO2 saving? I mean, that, it has... Overall, in service, this truck is displacing a quarter of the diesel with hydrogen. Right. Qu quarter of the diesel? Yeah. yeah. Which, is, which is big news, because what's the displacement of this engine? This is a big engine. It's a nine litre engine. Nine litres? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the average MPG of a nine litre commercial vehicle engine is going to be... In service, a diesel uh, RCV will be doing three to four MPG. <sighs> Okay, so we're talking massive numbers yeah, if it's using yeah. quarter of the quantity. Well, also if you think of it as a fleet, so you've got, you know, it's, it's big cities would have, I don't even know, maybe hundreds of these trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's when it's in that, when it scale it up in that level, you can imagine it, the, the difference it would make. But it's also, I think the important thing for me is that it's not waiting for a, a, a pure electric truck, because there is a pure electric uh, RCV operating, I think there's a couple operating in the UK, there's many of them, but that's a new truck, you know, it was, that's had to be built for that. Whereas this, you can convert existing vehicles with this. This is retrofitting, yeah. yeah. It's similar to the um, the retrofit high L LPG systems, I remember from. It's very similar to the, yeah, yeah and also to compressed gas systems. Right. So in, a, in an application like this, space isn't so much of a problem because you've got a lorry chassis to play with. Especially on a rigid chassis, it looks like a bin wagon. Yeah. You've got a lot of space between the wheels. Yeah. So on a tractor unit where you've got the wheels nearer together or you've got six wheels on, space is more of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's a, beer, there's a Bentley Bentayga going Bentley, past. Just a Bentley speed. just doing a few speeds. Oh, you look yeah. at half, half oh, hydrogen. Yeah, we're, doing, though, yeah. we're running on half hydrogen. That's amazing. Well done, Johnny. You're doing very well. I can't see that because of the bright, bright light bright. at the moment. And I'm, I'm just, to be honest, I'm being overtaken by trucks. By trucks. Quite, quite quickly. Quite aggressively, I would say. Tell me, Sean, about... Um, about what else you guys are working on at the moment so you know i'm driving this now and this has been in testing for how long 
Well, this has been in service. It's, it's actually been in service, service, so it's actually been doing bin It's rounds. been delivered by Aberdeen Council. It's in service. It's used quite quite a lot. It's, it's been using 90% of its kilometres since it's gone into service. It's been in hydrogen. 90%? 90%. Wow, OK, OK. Um, so this is a real world... I mean, we did two of them for Aberdeen Council. We also did a road sweep of Aberdeen Council. OK. Um, our current project is a, a development project, so it's not for commercialisation yet, but we're doing a 100% hydrogen combustion truck. If you burn hydrogen lean enough, yeah. in a high enough air to fuel ratio, you produce no NOx, so you produce zero emissions. Right. Right. So we're hoping to build a zero emission combustion truck right. as a technology demonstrator. Yeah. That's wow. brilliant. Amazing, isn't it? Because I mean, that was the other thing that I had explained to me before, was that the fact that this truck is, has a hydrogen demand means that the, you know whoever's invested in a hydrogen refueling station is actually got a customer you know because yeah. at the moment there's not a lot of demand for it but yeah. if you you know to the expense of putting in a hydrogen refueling station this yeah. thing's coming in or you know or even soon yeah. fleets of these with you know that are filling up with hydrogen every day it makes it worth doing yeah and presumably the reason why innovate have wanted us to come and drive this is because if more and more people know about the option to convert fleets, existing yeah. fleets. Like you say, no, it's not, and no, it's not electric. But using a quarter of the diesel, yeah, with a brace of these. Oh, it makes a huge. That's difference, a lot yeah. of fuel saved. Do you know the thing is? Is I've driven a lorry. I've driven a. I've driven an HGV on a frozen lake before. That was a bit yeah. random <laughs> for a telly show years ago. But the only other thing I do, I do an old Scammell lorry. Oh yeah. It was so physical. You forget lorries of old were so physical. And I've got the double D clutch. Double D clutch, full crash box. Yeah. The steering was unbelievable. You now know why lorry drivers had arms like Popeye. Yes. Yeah. Because you genuinely needed yeah. to. This thing is this thing is ridiculously assisted and easy. 100% electric sightseeing yeah, no. bus. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of them around. Do, do, I, do we get the keys to that later as well? We went, we came in on that the other, the other day, yesterday, and they've got a list of languages. And they've got all these languages at the bottom, they've got Yorkshire. Have they? <laughs> So whereabouts is uh, Ilemco base? We're based in Liverpool. Okay. And you convert all kinds of trucks. I know this is Mercedes, you're just saying you've we've done, we've done DAF, we've done Dennis Eagle, we'd, and then we do fucking do vans as well. I'm enjoying this. Maybe oh, yeah. a bit too I, I, it's weird talking yes, to a passenger no, who's approximately three feet higher than me. It's one of the most comfortable, I have to say, it's oh. one of the most comfortable vehicles I've ever Come been out, in. Man. I get a brilliant view, it's very comfy. I forgot to mention, by the way, disclaimer. Please oh, yeah. obey all traffic laws and use your own good judgment when driving. driving. Always go. concentrate on your driving and keep your eyes and mind, mind on the on road. The road. Yeah. But, um, by the time you've read all that, you'll have crashed. I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's time yeah. for a pasty and a, and a sausage sandwich. <laughs> I never thought I'd do a convoy. No, this is cool. <laughs> Alternative fuel vehicles. God, big, they're so big, aren't they? You forget how big trucks are, you kind of yeah. get used to them. And they're really big Arctic, yeah. so massive, aren't they? So what was the first delivery vehicle you used? Because that just sounded fabulous. That was a... Uh, it was a cargo cycle and a quadricycle, which only, wow. which was not even categorised as a van. Right. It was a uh, same uh, categorisation as a, as a G-Wiz. Right. So it was... Um, and with a 10 mile range. 10 or 12, 12 on a good day. <laughs> Perfectly adequate for urban deliveries. So, and then, where, so where are you now? Where, how, many, how many vehicles are you running now? We've been as high as 120. Wow. Uh, all electric, all delivering in central London. Wow. Um, I think we're sitting about 70 or 80 at the moment. God, that's um, amazing, isn't but, it? But uh, in many ways, it's better to have less vehicles, but we're being more efficient. So, right. You know, it's... Because um, presumably, a lot of what you do is actually the logistical planning of how you deliver something there and, you, and you, you know, to minimise wasted journeys and things. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so, guessing. I'm, yeah, it's exactly that. And right. We, we want to be as efficient as possible and therefore uh, as profitable as possible. 
are you delivering for lots of other different different companies that uh, you're delivering for? Or, uh, yeah, we've them? we've delivered for all sorts of people over the years. Whether it be um, we've delivered on behalf of big carriers, um, and then more recently we're delivering on behalf of big retailers that are, are predominantly selling e-commerce products. So everything you know, we're right. we're in the, uh, a world of, of internet shoppers, right? Um, and so we're delivering that stuff to people's doors right. uh, or their offices. Uh, and predominantly in urban areas. So, and, that, and everything you run is 100% electric, so yes. there's no... There's always, no <coughs> always has been, right? ever since the beginning. I mean, Which we, is great. We carved a niche in that industry, in a competitive industry, to do something a bit different. Yeah. The thing that will intrigue some viewers will be that you've got, say, 70 vehicles, which you are presumably charging in one depot, or have you got uh, more yes. than one depot? Yeah, predominantly, yeah. Right. Yeah, and we've had to get smarter uh, in the way that we do that, but in the, uh, in the, in the middle years, um, we had everything charged on three pin plugs. Wow. And, and the, way, the way I got around it was, I went onto eBay and I bought a load of those timers with little teeth on it, you know, oh, yeah, you know yeah. for turn the lights on and off in yeah. your house when you're not there. So I, I, I bought a load of those, uh, I got a spreadsheet out and a bit of paper and, and did some maths on how, what vehicles we've got, uh, how much charge they're going to use, what right. power we've got in the building, how many hours we've got left to charge them and just worked it out and then wow. changed all the little teeth. But literally, and shared, shared mechanically and, yeah. and physically. Uh, and really, we do the same thing now. It's just all smart. It's all right. done with, yeah. you know, on the cloud with algorithms on, on online portals. But right. the principle's the same. Yeah. Um, but a little bit more robust than, than my, uh, my my budget version. Right. Uh, but you, yeah, like everything, it'll start somewhere. Yeah, that is amazing, though. That yeah, you well, well, you know, we have And so what, basically what you're doing is... is uh, timing it so that they're not all coming on at the same time and there's you're spreading the load over it's, yeah, it's load it's load balancing yeah, yeah because uh, there is only a finite amount of energy that is in each building uh, yeah. some have more than others but you've got to work within whatever constraints you've got yeah um, and then in the future that's going to be a more national problem where we've got lots of people trying to charge at peak time yes um, and we need to manage that to make sure that it's spread yeah. um, so actually, what you're doing is helping the data that you're gathering doing that, then is presumably helping. Yeah, that, that's why the Innovate UK project and the Left project is important because it's it's uh, it's a benefit to us as a commercial business to to explore different areas of charging infrastructure, of right. larger vans, you know, all that all that kind of yeah. stuff. But at the same time, it's it's helping to educate potentially the next batch of people that want to adopt electric vehicles on scale. Right. Doing it one or two here or there isn't isn't too bad, isn't too hard. But yeah. When you get into 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s of vehicles all in one place, yeah. it, it requires a lot more thought. And it's not just about the vehicle, it's about the telematics, it's about the charging infrastructure, the, the algorithms, the rules you set, the capacity of the building, the, what else have you got going in the building? Have you got lifts? Have you got shutters? You know, that all makes a difference. Yeah. Well, we've had a lovely day here at Millbrook today, haven't we? We've had, I mean, you've driven, now you've driven a dustbin. Do, have you seriously never driven a dustbin? No, I never. Have dustbin? you? No. I don't think I've even been in one, so I was <laughs> no, riding. Yeah. I wanted to jump out and load some bins and, you know, and do a bit of that. But anyway. I did. I wanted to cable tie a doll onto the front. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the great thing about it is I can see this stuff actually working yeah. because it's being used in the in their right environment right yeah. now. So it's R&D. It's kind of like um, apprenticeships. Yes. You're, you're learning as you go in the real world rather than in a... And thing. then you'll become a, a mature uh, <laughs> truck. But, I mean, the fact they're doing a fully hydrogen one is really, I think, really interesting. Using existing technology is great. And, yeah. and the, the new well, stuff new are doing is amazing. In that yeah. little, you know, those vans, they're converting those vans. They've got 70 vans. They're, they're being sold in. as we speak, yeah. actually, in, in the real world. Yeah. UPS, hundreds yeah. of thousands of, of, fl of fleet that could be converted. Yeah. That's, that's cool news. So it's been good. It's been, it's been worth coming here. Everyone's a little bit tired now because it's always exhausting at the low carbon vehicle event in Millbrook. It's been, been busy. Because there's a lot of people here. They've all gone home now. It's kind of a bit nicer, which is why we can get to do this. But anyway, thanks for watching this. Um, uh, please have a quick look at the old Patreon link, the old uh, bell, the tingy bell. Ple Touch the bell. Uh, touch, <laughs> touch the bell. Touch the subscribe button uh, if you want to, and have a look at the Patreon link. I think I've said that twice, which is bad. That makes it sound more, that's that's, shame that's more needy. We're not that needy, but please have a look. Please. No. And uh, <laughs> and what else, what do we say at the end? Just if you have finished. been watching, thank you. Is that what we say? Something along those lines. Yeah.